What's good all of my favorite theologians out there? Welcome back to my channel, Theology Applied, the place where you are learning how all good theology is practical theology. And we have some good and practical theology for you today around the area of systematic theology, which is known as ecclesiology. Now, ecclesiology is the doctrine or the study of the church. And we're going to be looking at communion. Communion is an area in the church. It is that which the Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ instituted on the night he was betrayed. Now, you may have heard of communion. I like to call it the Lord's table, that we observe the Lord's table. And there are three ways in which churches observe the Lord's table. And so we want to unpack these three ways in which churches observe the Lord's table. And then we want to see which way is the best way for churches to observe this gracious means or this means of grace. And so the first way churches observe the Lord's table is by practicing what is known as an open table. So the open table uh, means exactly what it sounds like, that the table is open to anyone. Uh, that anyone can come and they can partake of the Lord's Supper, that anyone can come and eat the bread and they can drink of the wine or the Welch's grape juice. <laughs> That's what most churches have, right? Uh, they can partake of the bread and they can drink of, of the wine. Now, uh, th there's an issue with this because uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 through 29, which is really the springboard from where this lecture is coming from, Paul gives some startling words in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. He tells the church of Corinth that before an individual can partake of the Lord's Supper, that they must examine themselves. So there is self-examination that has to happen before the individual can partake of the Lord's Supper. And then he tells them uh, that they, he, they must examine themselves uh, and not partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. Now, what does Paul mean when he speaks of an unworthy manner? We know that he does not mean that you have to be perfect in order to observe it, but you do need to be confessing sin and repenting of sin before you partake of the Lord's Supper. Here is the warning that has cause no little controversy. The Apostle Paul says that if you take partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, you are drinking judgment to yourself. And it is for this reason that many people in the church of Corinth were getting sick and some of them had even died. Can you believe that? That they were partaking of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner and some of them were getting sick and some of them were dying. John Calvin said of uh, that comment that Paul made in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 29 uh, that People were, they were drinking poison to themselves by not observing the table in a manner that is faithful uh, to how God would have us to observe it. And so the problem with the open table, the problem with the open table is that there is the opportunity for unbelievers, those that are not in right, right standing with God and by not being in right standing with God, no way could they be in right standing with the church of God. They are partaking of the Lord's Supper and they should be fenced off from the table. So the open table, I believe, is the worst position out of the three positions that I'm going to give you. And what's startling about that is that this is the position that most churches take, that everybody is just welcome to the table. That's not what scripture uh, it tells us. That's not how we are informed by scripture, that anybody can just come to the table. The second position uh, that I want to give you is this, and you need to hold this tightly in your head, close, the close position, C-L-O-S, mark this, E, the close position of communion. Now, the close position of communion has one limitation, which is this, that only uh, the individuals that uh, the only individuals that can come to the table are those that are in the church or in a fellowship or in the denomination of that particular church. So they're in the in a fellowship or they are in the denomination uh, in which that fellowship resides. That's usually how it's defined. Uh, that could be an overgeneralization. If it is, then you help me out in the comment section. But there is an issue with this as well, uh, because one, you can still run into the same problem that you have here, that unbelievers are partaking of the Lord's Supper. Uh, 
but it's usually assuming in the closed position that the individuals taking the Lord's Supper are, they are believers. So they are saved, uh, but there is a problem here as well. And the problem here is that the individual might not be in good standing. If they're coming from another fellowship, perhaps they are not in good standing with that fellowship. So what would this look like? This would look like that individual perhaps being under church discipline for some sin that they have committed and their local fellowship has prevented them from partaking of the Lord's Supper. And so in the close, even in the closed position, you have the possibility of people coming to partake of the Lord's Supper that are not in good standing with their churches uh, because of some known sin that they have committed. And there is the possibility that you might get the occasional visitor uh, that comes that is not uh, that is not saved and they could partake of the Lord's Supper as well and thus uh, uh, be found guilty of committing what Paul is warning us about in first Corinthians chapter 11 verses 28 so we see that there is an issue here with the closed position the last position that we have is the closed and this has a D at the end so you have the closed position so look at this you have an open table which I believe is the worst <laughs> closed table which has its problems as well because uh, we don't know what's going on in the fellowship of the church that a visitor uh, that, that a visitor might be um, leaving and coming to your church we don't know what the issues are there but then you have this closed position and I believe that the closed position is the strongest position I don't believe that it is without problems in fact when I taught this I was teaching this to our church not not too long ago and I asked the congregation to give me some issues with this and they gave me uh, some issues it was it was a helpful discussion but um, the uh, the closed position has uh, this 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 caveat that the individual has to be a member of that local church so they have to be a member of that local church and if you're not a member of that local church you cannot partake of the Lord's Supper. Now, there are strengths with this. The strength is that the church ha has, are, the church is exercising their duty to the membership when they practice a closed table. They're holding the membership responsible for their walk with the Lord and their walk with one another. They are uh, acknowledging that the individual has committed to this particular local church body and that they are a, though they are a sinner, as Mark Dever says, they are a sinner that is a, the repenting kind of sinner, that the church uh, is for sinners, <laughs> but the church is only for the repenting kind of sinner. Uh, so uh, they are acknowledging that this individual, though not perfect, is a repenting sinner, that they are in right relationship with the local church. And as far as they can see, they are in right relationship with God as well, in right relationship with God and in right relationship with their fellow brothers or sisters. It also uh, assumes or acknowledges that the individual has been baptized into this particular local church fellowship. And I believe that this is the strongest position. Why? Because it is causing the the individual to observe 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 28 1 by a self exam and then it's the strongest position in my estimation because it gives to the the pastors and the leaders the greatest opportunity for shepherding or pastoral care now the pastors have the pastors and the elders have the responsibility of uh, fencing off the table from members that are not walking in light of the profession that they have made. If there's some known sin, if the pastors have an individual under church discipline or if an individual is under church discipline, uh, they would know that and then they would be able to keep the individual from drinking judgment to themselves. So the act of fencing off the table, and here's how we do it in our church. I don't know how, I don't know if you do it in your church, but this is how we do it in our, our fellowship. We'll have ministers up in the front and they will say before they pass out the elements, if you have, if you are not a believer, allow the elements to pass you by. If you have not made a profession of faith, allow the elements to pass you by. If you are not in right relationship or you have an offense with a brother or a sister, allow the elements to pass you by and take this as an opportunity to get right with that brother or sister so that you can come and partake of the Lord's Supper the next time we observe 
the Lord's table. Now, do you hear in that, that sanctifying principle there? That is what the Lord's table, one of the chief principles uh, that we find in the Lord's table, that it is sanctifying, that it causes us to examine ourselves when we find sin there, to look away from ourselves at Jesus Christ, confess the sin, get right with our brothers and sisters, and then in good conscience partake of the Lord's supper. The third way in which we fence off the table is we fence it off from children that have not made a profession of faith. So if children, if your children have not made a profession of faith, allow the elements to pass them by. Now, why would we do that? because it gives to us the best opportunity to practice pastoral care. The individual has a responsibility to examine themselves. The pastors have a responsibility to care for the sheep. And as you come to the table, here is the practical theology in today's good theology. It gives to you a great opportunity to experience the sanctifying work of God the Holy Spirit as you confess sin, repent of sin, make sure you're in right relationship with your brothers and sisters, and by way of that, be in right relationship with God. Listen, I pray that this was helpful for you on today. I have enjoyed this lecture. I hope to bring you many, many more in the near future. If you have any questions or any comments that you want to leave, please leave those in the comment section. I will do my best to interact with you. I will be bringing you more lectures just like these in the near future. In the meantime, until we see one another again, remember that all good theology is practical theology. I will see you on the next one.